Hello there, my name's Nick. Welcome to the Build a Procedural Scene uh, tutorial series. I'm going to take you through um, everything you need to know to build the scene that you've seen in the thumbnail. Um, this, this image, let's put it up. That one. And I'm going to teach you how to make the procedural rocks that you can see in the image. So we'll go into the shader editor, put bits and bobs together, and then create the rocky cliff, um, which we'll use for boulders and which we'll use for the ground as well. Then we'll move on to making the grass um, so we can scatter that along the surface. And we will end up making a tree using the sapling preset, which is uh, pre-installed, not pre-installed, it comes with a um, blender. You just need to add it in the preferences if you haven't already added sapling tree gen. Um, and then we'll just add a mist pass, uh, place a few bits and bobs and, you know, make a scene together, basically. And the reason I'm doing it is because procedural shaders are, in my opinion, way better than RGB textures um, in terms of ease of use. Once you've made the shader, they're really simple to use and they're seamless instantly. You know, the, the I was making a scene a while back and... I had about five or six RGB textures uh, dotted around. It was a basement scene, derelict basement. And just adding one RGB texture took about a gigabyte of memory. You know, if you bump up to three, four, five different 4K RGB textures, my, my system's an RTX 2060 and it'll give up. <laughs> Once I'm using about four and a half gig of RAM to render a scene, it just, it wants to blow, it wants to blow up. So I try and keep all my renders around three gig max. But with procedural shaders, you're saving a lot on memory because you can get uh, the similar results as a 4K RGB texture using uh, a procedural shader and using about 200 meg to render, if that. The, the, the memory usage comes down to how many subdivisions the surface you've put the material on needs in order to look good. Whereas with a, a 4K RGB texture, it's instantly going to use a gig memory. And then you've got to add on top of that all the subdivisions you need if you're looking to displace uh, or micro displacement or something. So that's one of the benefits. The, the, uh, it uses way less memory. It's completely seamless because trying to tile an RGB texture image, especially for like a brick wall or something, it's it's time consuming, loads of UV mapping, all that stuff. You don't need to do any of that. We just plot material on the, on the uh, objects and push. Job done. Bob's your uncle, fat is your aunt. Um, and I found this these methods by mucking about in the shadow editor, experimenting. That's where I found a great deal of fun. It's just you know taking taking this cable out and then plugging it in there i did the same thing with reason which was a music production software where it's got like a visible rack and what you flip round and you can just take wires out and plug them in and i applied the same rules to to blender um just put a few nodes in connected them up look what it does oh, it does that right what happens when i take that out and put that in and yeah, it does that and you kind of work it out as you go along from experimentation and uh, initially when i started my I had one of my um, I've got an, a, a blender market shop where I put all my infinite builder procedural shaders. There's a, there's a few of them on there, and the, one of them, the internet in, internet in, infinite service builder, was the first one I started with. And initially, it looked like this, and then I learned a bit more, and now it looks like this. Awesome, and it does loads of things. So. When you get started, once you get, once you learn these tools, uh, these little techniques, uh, you can apply them to anything, anything. But one thing I'll say before we get cracking is, I came from Cinema 4D, and you don't care about scale in Cinema 4D at all. I am learning that Blender likes uh, likes you to be to scale. Um, so the scene we've built is it's relative scale. Like the the mountain's that big, so I want the tree that big. If the tree's that big, then the grass is going to be that big. Turns out the grass in this scene is 20 meters high, <laughs> which is a bit of a jungle. Um, but, you know, when you're done with it, you can just scale the whole scene down um, rather than... Because, you know, it's relative relative scale is fine. So if you just scaled it all down, if you cared that much, then you probably get real scale and have grass that's less than 20 meters um, tall. Uh, but, yeah, 
should we get cracking? All right, let's do it. Um, I'm going to jump down to, to this end of the screen and then we'll get started with part one. I will see you right there. Bye-bye.